Yo, 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 what are the best classes in TBC? What is this? Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a tier list for the Burning Crusade classes. Okay. And bear in mind this is going to be a tier list for the launch of the Burning Crusade, so tier 4 raids like Karazhan Ghouls and Magfaridons. I can see Meta Goblin wrapping that Protection Paladin. An excellent choice. An excellent choice. Protection Paladin, a very good thing in TBC. I will make videos in the future for different tiers of raid content throughout the Burning Crusade's lifetime because these classes in these tiers will definitely jump around as the expansion actually progresses. Okay. The important thing to bear in mind is that there's two kinds of people in the community right now. First of all, people who play on private servers and people who don't, and people who just have fond memories of the Burning Crusade from when they used to play it. And the issue okay. is that the people playing on private servers are playing massively buffed servers where the raid bosses and the scripting is way more difficult, which means that raid guilds have to minimax much, much more and have more optimal setups in order to clear the content. That's exactly what I also heard that many private servers are way, way, way overtuned and the dungeons and the raids are much more difficult. Classic and Molten Core. Uh, it's just not that hard, let's be honest, and that's the reality. So people on private servers are try-harding a lot more right now. Yep. There were people on yep. my last video that has a similar to topic to this, basically saying that, yeah, if you're a warrior or you're rogue, you're not getting a raid spot, and that's probably true if you're playing on private servers that are massively buffed. But when the TBC actually launches, it's, it's not going to be the case. It, it won't matter that you're doing 300 less DPS than a Warlock, because if you're a valuable ma raid member, you turn up on time, you know, every week, on time, you're going to get a raid spot, and it's yep. much better to have a more balanced setup, so that when it comes to giving, you know, giving out gear, it's faster to gear everyone up, and you're not wasting loot. The reason why I say this is because I don't want people yeah. to be massively disheartened if the class that you want to play in TBC is a low tier class. Let's say it right now. Top tier classes are definitely gonna be a shaman, paladin, warrior, western druid, warlock, hunter. I don't think it's gonna matter that much at the end of the day because if you think about it, the lower tier classes are probably gonna have a high population when TBC does actually come out because people are gonna progress their mains, right? And people aren't gonna wanna totally re-roll. Whereas when private servers launches, people create fresh characters knowing entirely what the best classes are because they, you know, watch videos like this extensively before they choose their class. Yeah. But anyway, let's get on with it. Last thing to bear in mind is that I haven't rated these classes purely on things like healing per second or, you know, damage per second. They are evaluated on their value that they bring to a raid. So the support classes bring a lot of value to a raid, but don't do that much DPS as sure. the other class. Like Shadow, Shadow Priest, for, for example, Elemental Shaman, Enhancement Shaman, and stuff like that. Rogue, unfortunately, not bringing that much, that much utility. And also Warriors, N unfortunately, not so much that that utility bring to the to the raid. And for, yeah, it, it is what it is. Classes. I've decided to only use three tiers this time because I think if you use like four or five tiers, it makes certain classes look way too good or way too bad and it causes way too many arguments in the comment section, so I'm only using three tiers. But more comments means more traction, more uh, communication, and uh, it's actually gonna be rating your uh, your video higher, so I, I think that you should use the regular A, A, B, C, D, A, F, G. So for tier A, firstly we have Resto Shaman, Holy Priest, Resto Druid, and Holy Paladin, so Basically, all the healers I've put into tier A because they're always a massively high demand and healers always bring a massive amount of support and value to a raid. Pre you are talking about classes, but I think also it depends on the specs, to be quite honest with you. Be straightforward. Next, we have Hunter and Warlock. Hunter and Warlock are the absolute kings of DPS yeah. in the Burning Crusade from the beginning of the Burning Crusade all yep. the way to the end they're going to be topping the DPS meters and they are just simply the best DPS in the Burning Crusade. And lastly, we have a Protection Warrior. Again, remember that this is bearing in mind the launch of a Burning Crusade and Tier 4 raids because okay. I know that Prop Warrior kind of fall off as the expansion progresses okay. and Feral Druid and Prop Paladin have more value. So just bear that in mind. 
but yeah, basically the Protection Warrior is definitely the best tank in Tier 4 raiding, and it's simply because of all their really strong defensive cooldowns. I heard a lot of opinions that uh, at the end of the game, uh, at the end of the TBC uh, phases, Druid is going to catch up and Druid is actually going to become the best main tank and uh, Protection Paladin is going to be the main off tank. But uh, at the beginning, since the launch, uh, Warrior is going to be the main tank because uh, he's going to be the best scaling and, uh, and the best stuff like that. So, yeah. So for tier B, first of all I've put over support classes in this tier, so Shadow Priest, Rep Paladin, Boomkin, Feral Druid, Enhancement Shaman, Elemental Shaman, and that's all of them. All of these classes provide a massive amount of useful utility, off healing, mana regeneration, all that kind of great yeah. stuff to a raid, including really useful buffs and debuffs. Next we have the Mage. The only real reason why mages in tier B is because they do less DPS than hunters and warlocks and do more DPS than the melee classes and they are kind of semi useful because they can give the raid f you know, food and do decursing and stuff like that. But as of the expansion progresses I've heard in some well it is more difficult for a mage to actually get a raid spot unfortunately. And okay that's very interesting because I also heard that a lot of, lot of uh, bosses in a TBC are not gonna be so melee friendly so you will have actually you will want to have more range DPS so I think that still mage gonna be in, in demand. Lastly we also have the meme spec tanks although they're not really much of a meme spec in the Burning Crusade so we have Protection Paladin and Feral Druid as the second best tanks for TBC raiding. Okay. And lastly we have TSC which is where the melee DPS live unfortunately and that is obviously a warrior and a rogue. And you're probably thinking, no way a rep paladin or an enhancement shaman is in a higher tier than a warrior or a rogue. Enhancement shaman is providing bloodlust. In TBC, bloodlust is going to be party based. And a retribution paladin, retribution paladin is going to be providing freedoms, hand of salvations. He's going to be providing kings, wisdom, smites, all these type of buffs. And uh, he's going to be providing, I think, the buff replenishment is going to be also in TBC, which is giving you mana. Uh, the retribution paladin is providing more than warrior is just DPSing, and rogue is just DPSing. But the Retribution Paladin is doing also some damage, but also providing a lot of utility. That's the that's the difference. And the Elemental Shaman and Enhancement Shaman, they're gonna be must. Must. Ideally, you want to have five Shamans. Because 25 people, Bloodlust party based, you want to have Bloodlust for every single per uh, party. The reason why I have done this is because obviously, Warriors and Rogues, they do more DPS than Enhancement Shamans and Rep Paladins, but... Yeah. Overall, I just feel that they provide less value to a raid because of the support that they actually provide. But okay. that's just my humble opinion. You can massively disagree with me if you want to. But like for instance, Rep Paladin, they can use Crusade Aura to regenerate every single Paladin seal on the boss, which provides ridiculous AOE healing, mana regeneration, and 3% extra crit damage on every single other DPS in the raid. So in my eyes that's a massive amount of value because yeah. rogues they do provide value in the dps that they provide and some useful utility from time to time but overall they're not really a support class they're more of a selfish class and so is the warrior arm spec does provide a little bit more value than fury because it has a debuff that increases the dps of the entire rate by four percent which is actually pretty useful okay. so i'd argue that an arms warrior is probably a little bit um better and going on to a tier B class rather than a Fury Warrior. But anyway, I don't want people to be massively disheartened or massively angry with the fact that Warriors and Rogues are in tier C because they are going to get brought to raids. You know, there's going to be a couple in most raid groups. They're not going to be the, you know, the meme specs of Classic WoW. They're not going to be a Classic WoW Enhancement Shaman where they have absolutely barely any value because, because they yeah. do. And to be honest, if you get lucky and you get really strong weapons really early in your raiding, you actually will out DPS the other DPS simply by the fact that you've got an awesome weapon. So if, say for instance you're an arms warrior and you get demise, sorry, despair really, really early, 
that's going to be a massive DPS boost. And you will be competing with the other DPS in a raid, and obviously you probably will do more DPS than all the support classes, although in my experience a rep paladin can very very easily compete on DPS meters of a warrior and rogue okay, okay. if you're playing blood elf and you have seal of blood. That's why Blizzard will need to make sure that the uh, seal of blood that the only blood elf paladins are supposed to have will be also given to the alliance paladins otherwise the alliance paladins are not going to be that viable and seal of vengeance uh, that are alliance paladins having seal of vengeance is to be given also uh, to the blood elf paladins we just have to make it sure because anyway horde ratios are stronger than the alliance ratios it's, it's just a fact for PvE, for PvP, uh, in what look, it's gonna be a little bit switched up. The best, uh, the best uh, racial is gonna be owned by humans, so they can have double shrinkings in PvP. In PvP, so yeah. In my personal experience, and then obviously you also provide a lot more, like I said, value in the ways of utility. So that's why those classes, the support classes, are slightly higher than those melee classes, but anyway, I think I've talked about it long enough. At the end of the day, I just don't really don't want people to get angry and disheartened by the fact that Warriors and Rogues are a tier C class, because I know a lot of people who are playing Classic and are looking forward to playing TBC, a lot of them are playing Warriors and Rogues. Anyway, my name is Metagoblin, to my next video. My final conclusion on this is that these are kind of like best classes, but if you look at it realistically, what are the classes that are gonna be in the highest demand? I think first one in demand is gonna be Druid. And the reason for that is that even in Classic, there is not that many Druids. So I think the situation is gonna be kind of similar in TBC. So I think Druid is gonna be in quite demand. You are providing Gift of the Wild, you are po providing Thorns, uh, th Thorns buff. Uh, then I think for RDF, for a regular dungeon, Definitely every tank is gonna be in high demand. Uh, Druid tank, Prot tank, uh, Prot Warrior tank, Prot Paladin tank. They're gonna be in high, high demand. Shadow Priest, that's, that's kinda... Um, I don't think he's gonna be dead in demand, but he's definitely a really, really good support. And uh, I don't think you need more than like two priests, to be honest, Shadow Priests. Uh, so for dungeons and raids, I would say that shamans are gonna be in the top demand definitely the reason as i mentioned you just need five shamans but also at the same time it's good that they should be different specs like you can have for example two elementals two enhancements and two restoration uh, shamans and what it's gonna make is that uh, they're not gonna be competing for the same gear that much so I understand that a lot of private servers are mid-maxing and they want to have the perfect composition because they want to have the, the maximum the maximum DPC, DPS possible. But I think in Classic, as uh, Metagoblin mentioned, it's going to be a little bit different because people uh, people are not going to be mid-maxing that much. A lot of guilds are just going to be like they want to have a better player, a player that is more reliable than just to have uh, another hunter who is who, who doesn't really care about raid who doesn't really care about the guild and if you are having rogue and uh, if you're not having a rogue and a rogue gear drop it's gonna be wasted so i think there's still gonna be or there should be like a rogue and a warrior but uh, i don't think they're gonna be having that high of a priority you know so it, it's gonna be tougher but i think it's still good if, you, if you're a warrior you can still just like put some prod gear and you can be off tanking for example or uh, for the dungeons if you're gonna be a tank it's gonna be really easy for you i think it's gonna be a little bit harder for rogues to find a gear spot because they are just dps they cannot be really doing any any healing they cannot be really tanking so i think it's gonna be really bit tough for them druid if you're gonna spec into resto really really easy to find uh, a raid spot really easy to find uh to find a dungeon to group very very easy to find dungeon dungeon group healers and uh and tanks are in high demand always for the dungeons five man dungeons especially for the raids 
for the raids it might be a little bit different for the tanks because usually you just need two tanks so main tank and off tank it just it is what it is and you have 25 people so the rest must be dps and heals so uh, yeah it depends in my personal opinion the the highest demand is gonna be for shamans uh and for warlock and hunters i would say but definitely shamans i would say shaman is gonna be the top the most desired and uh yeah pretty much pretty much good good video meta goblin already summed up all the points that i wanted to mention but uh yeah i agree with him on on many points it is what it is fellas you know please subscribe to meta goblin and uh leave a like on his video what are the best classes in tvc you can find the original video in the description below also please subscribe to my channel and leave a like on my video and also leave me a comment and write me what video am i supposed to check out in the next one i would be really thankful for that one uh and if you're gonna leave a good suggestion you can be in my next video fellas thank you for watching this video um, it's been late it's going late thank you for watching see you in the next one bye <laughs>